tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 5, Lesson 16. In this lesson, we're going to review the properties of polygons, lines, and angles. Let's start by looking at this group of shapes. One thing that we know about polygons is that they must be closed figures. So we'll write that in the blank here. And then we'll look at the shapes below and decide whether or not they're polygons. This first shape has an opening here, so it cannot be considered a polygon. The square is a polygon because there are no openings in that shape. And the pentagon is also a polygon, no openings there. And my last shape has an opening at the side there, so that would not be considered a polygon. So that's one property of polygons. Polygons also have to have straight sides with no intersections. So we'll write polygons have straight sides. And we'll look at the shapes below. The first one is a rectangle, and you can see it has four straight sides, so that is a polygon. The next shape has some straight sides, but it also has a curve, so that is not a polygon. The triangle has three straight sides, so yes, it is a polygon. And the last shape is an oval, and that is not a polygon because it doesn't have straight sides. The next thing we'll review is the difference between parallel and perpendicular lines. Well, parallel lines are lines that run in the same direction, and throughout the lines, they stay the same distance apart. So this is an example of a set of parallel lines. No matter where I measure, the distance apart stays the same. So we'll circle that group because that shows me a set of parallel lines. The next one is also a set of parallel lines. So you can see it doesn't matter what directions the lines run in. They can be diagonal, vertical, horizontal. And this last group down here, these would be considered parallel lines. It's a series of lines. They all stay the same distance apart from each other. They all run in the same direction. Now, perpendicular lines are lines that create 90 degree angles when they cross each other or where they intersect. So you can see in this example, these two lines intersect and actually make four 90 degree angles. So we'll put a box around that one. In this shape, where the two lines meet, we create two 90 degree angles. So those would be perpendicular lines. And the last set here, we have two lines that cross each other where they meet, 90 degree angles are formed. So we'll put a box around that one as well. So there's just a little review between parallel and perpendicular lines. And lastly, we'll review the different types of angles. The directions say label each angle as right, acute, obtuse, or straight. I'm going to drop down to the right angle first because that helps us identify our other angles. So the angle down in the bottom right corner is a 90 degree angle and it makes that nice box corner. So that's our right angle. So we're going to use that as our benchmark angle. Up above, we see an angle that's opened up wider than that 90 degree angle. And you can see the measurement is greater than 90 degrees. Anytime we have an angle with a measurement that's greater than 90 and less than 180, we call that an obtuse angle. So again, that obtuse angle is greater than 90 and less than 180. Next to it, we have a straight angle. It looks like a straight line, and its measurement is 180 degrees. So we'll call that a straight angle. And our last angle is an acute angle. This acute angle's opening is smaller than a right angle. So the measurements of an acute angle would be 89 degrees or less. So there's our four angles. And again, we use that right angle as our benchmark angle to determine the labels for our other angles. 